Chris Verdonk is our next guest. Um, he's educated in visual arts, architecture, and theater. Chris Verdonk plays with the border between visual arts and theater, between installation and performance, between dance and architecture. In this way, he researches the fascination uh, for the relationship between the human and the machine, as, I, as I already said. And he, recently, he created In Void, uh, an installation, a circular installation with no uh, humans in it, um, actually about the absence about hum of human race. And then there is a theater play, Conversations at the End of the World, also made in 2016, where um, Chris researches um, how will we as humans act and talk just before catastrophe strikes. And tonight he will take us, take us on a journey in his mind, um, very curious about that, through his own brain exercises. Um, and I'm very curious how we can relate to them. Chris Verdonk, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, good evening. Um, just about the beekeepers, I love them also. Um, we have a little problem now in Brussels that we can't keep bees anymore because they're not allowed to have flowers for the bees. So there are too many beekeepers because it's a kind of a hype now. Um, and, and these... There are not enough flowers. We grow more flowers. Uh, and this is quite inspiring for me. Um, the fact that we need to put more, we want to do the, the beekeeping thing, but actually we forgot that they need flowers. <laughs> and I think that's, um, um, I would love to just by listening at stuff, I would love to do some, um, um, uh, first of all, I, I'm, um, I'm trying here, I will just talk about my point of view or my, artistic practice um, and not as a, as a curator or so, but just what inspires and how to deal with things or some, somehow. Um, just for the artists around or people that do the creative things. Um, a friend of mine went to Madrid sometime and some time ago, a year ago, and he wanted to, uh, he went to Wikipedia to look for famous Madrid, Madrillians. Um, and until the 70s, it were painters and writers, and, and from the 70s, there were football players. Um, I think football players are now one of the major and most important people in the world. Um, all the money goes there. They are the big heroes. And the artists, since the 60s, our position is being due to the old guys, uh, compromised almost completely. The question is, if you read papers and you see, ah, oh, the artists are doing something nonsensical, nonsensical again. Um, um, these beautiful uh, 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 things, they, and I think they're very worthwhile, etc. Uh, but I'm very concerned about our position as artists and how to be taken serious and how to What's our position in the world at this moment? What do we, what do we have to say? What are, are we, how, what's our position? Um, um, and I, I'm, I'm very um, uh, concerned about it. Um, to call it, to, to say it with uh, Herbert Achterenbusch, it's a German playwright, uh, you have no chance, but you have to take it. Um, uh, and he, he saw it really, somebody was drowning, another guy said like, shall I jump? And he says like, yeah, 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 go ahead, you don't have a chance, but you have to try it. And I think that's a, a very interesting one, um, being an artist, just go for it. But don't expect too much. Um, uh, Heinrich Müller, uh, also German playwright, uh, it's very inspiring for me. Um, we, are he we are here for a short while as a specimen. Um, we will be replaced by, if we go, by animals or machines, and that's okay. Um, they're also good, they're also complex, they're also, also these machines, if they would replace us, they also produce beauty, they're also, they will take care of, uh, I don't know what. Um, so, so uh, it's okay to go. 
nobody really misses us. Um, uh, uh, G.J. Ballard, also very positive, the writer of Crash, uh, as you might know, um, he says like, well, I'm, a, I'm an artist that will not say, be careful, bend ahead, drive slower. He would say, drive faster, there's a, a, a bend in front as a position. Um, oh yeah, and the hope, you are asking about the hope. Hope is easy. Um, <laughs> I really like the hope is easy. Um, it comes from a discussion um, uh, on Dutch television and, and one of the, the, the biologists says like, yeah, hope, yeah, do we still have hope? Well, hope is easy. Hope is something you can produce, you can, hope is something, but to really do something, that's something completely different. You can have hope, um, but that's a, that was cheap in his, in his sense, in his idea. Um, Stephen Hawking, some time ago, uh, he put it on Alta Vista questions. He posed, uh, should we still go on? Wouldn't we just stop with it? And then you can post answers, like the best answer of uh, Alta Vista. And the, the, the one with the most votes was, well, we just can't stop. <laughs> we cannot. I mean, we can say you can shoot a bullet, but if you don't do that, what to do? And I think that's the question. Um, what to do? Um, and then I would like to go for, there's Sir Martin Rees, royal astronomer. Um, he wrote the wonderful little book, 10, this one, um, Our Final Century, uh, 10 examples how we will destroy the planet. 10 very good examples, uh, biological warfare, uh, the whole thing, he just goes, one by one. And his idea at one point was, why not have this kind of ecological commission, uh, a moralistic thing, like a commission with, with important scientists that would discuss, and if you, have a, if you do an invention, you go to them and you say, what do you think of it? And they say, they can judge if it's life-threatening for life on Earth, uh, then they say you can do not, you can't invent it. Sorry, no go. Um, and then immediately you feel this kind of hmm. Can we? Can we? Can we stop? Can we? Can we not invent something? Is that something of our specimen? Will we say we will not do this because yes we can, but we don't. Can I say that again? Yes, we can, but we don't. Um, so this is a, a, a so no, and there you, there I, there I'm, I'm quite convinced about that. That there's this kind of urge deep inside of us that is maybe self-destructive, um, but no, we cannot invent something. Not. It's just too tempting. It's just, it's there, and. We will use with all the energy of our human specimen of whatever we can invent, we will invent. Um, we, is there a, was there an experiment crossing a, a, a chimpanzee with a, with a human being? Yes, of course, because we can. And that's, the, that's, the, that's probably the big reason why we did it, because we simply can. And if um, we don't do it here in, in, in Europe, well, we'll find another place to do it. So I think deep inside of us, there is this self-destructive thing or this, this urge. And the question also, well, is it such a bad thing? Um, and is it, what does it produce? What does it, what does this urge to go on produce? Um, the, I, I, I sincerely hope, and that's something completely different than my artistic practice, 
Um, I sincerely hope we will not invent some things, but I don't trust us. Um, and so the, the, the um, I think also, well, all these things, like there is no chance but take it, I think it's a very positive thing also. It's a very um, courageous thing, and I think in the, artist, in, the, in the artistic practice, there is no reason why there would be an issue, a thing in the newspapers, in the world happening, without you grasping it, looking at to it for hours, and trying to understand what the fuck is it? What is it? This glass try to understand what it is. Um, and I think that is uh, the main goal of artists, try to understand stuff on which level, whatever, try to understand things, play with it like a dog plays with slippers. Just rub it open, take it open, play with it, do something new. Well, the dog doesn't do anything new with it, but anyway. Um, and then and you put it in the world and you think like, this is what I did. What do you reckon? Um, so that's this. How, how far am I? OK. Um, and uh, so the, um, this position of, of, of a maker, of somebody who lives or walks on this planet and watches things and tries to understand. One of my, my, my favorite topics is, surprise, uh, warfare. And um, there's something really interesting, I think. And I'm trying now on a topic on what are we doing here? Who are we and what is our daily, contemporary, daily life condition? Um, we all nag always about, we don't have no choice anymore. Uh, we don't have this, we don't there, we don't here, and probably it's true. Um, um, so, <laughs> so can we do something? Maybe not. And there you have it. Um, but the question is, of course, what are the dynamics behind it? How it's this warfare thing, one of the, the, the examples is, for example, if you take uh, Napoleon and you see all the knights and these colorful people with feathers on their hairs and, and stuff, um, horses, their idea was to be as present as possible. You see this on the old films, like, uh, like this massive present human beings. Um, and then you have these ones and that, those ones, and then they crash into each other, the blood and the gut and the gore. Um, and even they, they had colorful vests not to show the blood because honor things. Um, then this World War II came and we invented the, the tank. Um, and then suddenly, even the first days of World War I were quite interesting because soldiers still had feathers on their, he on their heads and it didn't, couldn't do anything about actually the machines that were so developed and everything went so fast and this whole technological development went on and suddenly they had to go into the, they had to disappear in the, in, in, in the landscape. They had to go on the ground. And suddenly they had to hide, this camouflage stuff is going on. And suddenly um, the idea was that, that, that uh, instead of being present, they had to hide. And you can even go further and further in it until there's really no chance anymore. Um, uh, we think about Afghanistan and the drones. They don't see it, it comes from nowhere, it comes from somewhere else. And they didn't even see it coming. There is absolutely no chance. Um, uh, so it is, it's, a, it's a, this, this, um, this human development of, of erasing ourselves is, according to me, something we, we urge, we long for. Um, the self-driving car, 
And in the same, you, you oh, the, the self-driving car, we can do it now. And the next page is, oh no, the robots take our work. Well, fucking don't invent the self-driving car. And you could drive it, and you could pollute all over the place. Um, so uh, uh, then you'd have to, <laughs> sorry. Um, the, the, there's something strange about our specimen. Um, uh, so if you think about the electric car, beautiful invention, um, or, or maybe not. Who knows? The batteries, risky business. Uh, maybe we have a stack of batteries that is so huge that we will drown in batteries. And then we have, uh, we don't know what to do. Then we have to clean them up. And that will take, I don't know what. Or I love it when people have a good driving car and then get rid of it and then throw it away actually and then buy a new one, an electric one. And actually by that they will pollute so much that uh, the electric car is just absolutely fucking nonsense. Take your old car and drive around until it's broken and then you use it until the end. So what I want to say is that it's super, apparently it's super difficult for us to understand what we are doing. Um, and I think artists should be like dogs with slippers to try to understand. Um, so I will quickly go one or two uh, little, oh, sorry, that's not this one. It's, where are we? I had this, these computers are so, yes. So um, this one, for example, is an, it's an old piece, but one of my, so I think the, so this is a sensory deprivation tank. Um, the water is 37 degrees exactly. Uh, an actor is in, or performer is inside, and he gets into a trance. Um, the water is 37 degrees. He doesn't see, he doesn't feel, he doesn't hear anymore. And actually, there you have a human being that is so surrounded by his own inventions that he is just there. There's no more feelings. There's no more nothing. We're just there being supported, living by a machine. Yeah, um, so there he is. Um, then there's a heart. That's one of my favorites. So heartbeat, uh, the heartbeat is in real time. Um, the former, yeah. And every 500 heartbeats, she's pulled backwards, eight meters backwards, four meters high, smashes into a mattress, falls down on a mattress on the stage, gets back on stage and waits for the next 500 heartbeats that go faster, of course, because due to the adrenaline. Um, and then she waits, and then she waits until she goes again. Uh, by the way, it's fun to do. But I think it's a kind of position we're in.
the, the little little story. We were in Avignon with this one, and um, and uh, uh, Claire was in front of of audience, and there was a woman very sitting very near to her, uh, because there was something, um, and this woman was like, ah, finally theater, I understand, and um, but she didn't see the the cable. And then um, this, this, it's long, uh, 500 heartbeats, five minutes more or less, very, very boring. And then the, so, so uh, Claire went um, and this woman screamed out loud, <laughs> loud in the theater like, no, um, because she just saw somebody going. Um, and so uh, uh, Claire was coming back and then she was laughing because she was like, yes, got one. Um, and this woman kept on laughing because she was so afraid. And then Claire had to laugh, and then the audience had to laugh, and everybody had to laugh. And in the meanwhile, this horrible machine went on. And it gave a perfect position in, in what we are, I think. Um, one of the, this was a, a Überlebenskunst. Um, uh, Überlebenskunst is a, is a festival in, in Berlin and it was uh, about the ecological things. And then I, I was uh, thinking, what can we do? What is it that we effectively can do? And then I thought, uh, maybe one of the best things we can do is sleep. While we sleep, we don't do so much wrong. It's like eight hours a day that we kind of don't use too much energy. We don't do, we don't, Etc. Etc. It's okay. So I thought, let's put the audience to sleep. Um, um, so this is a dancer. This is Mr. Stiggold, who tells how important sleep is. Um, uh, Alix tells about. Um, uh, well, it's actually one huge hypnosis session. This the whole performance. And does it work? No, it's just crossing. Yeah. Um, and we, we try to, well, 60% of audience does sleep after a while. It's, um, um, I didn't want to make images of it, but programmers, curators don't believe when I tell them that they really are asleep, the poor human beings. Um, and the, the nice thing about it is that it, that it was quite comforting. It was a, a for me. This is it goes on and goes on, and uh, people are really asleep. They're just gone. They don't, this one, I think, there's somebody even with the back to the audience, uh, to the to the to the dancer, doesn't care anymore. Um, and then, and if you take Mr. Stiggold's idea, then um, uh, then then the. Um, it is really important for us, and the more we sleep and the more we take care of a, a healthy hygiene in sleeping, the better the decisions in our lives will be made. And so, um, um, beautiful theory. Um, in general, I, I think one of the, 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 the most, uh, the condition we're in, especially in Europe, is entertainment industry where, Disneyland of course, where, um, where we are we don't produce anymore. We are just um, disappeared. We we are so. So there's our friend. The whole idea of this performance was that he shouldn't be there. It's not his show. He just is on the wrong moment, on the wrong spot. He. It's not his show. Um, so the question was also, how can we, there he is again, realizing that it is not the place. So he goes further.
Yeah, he just walks around for hours. Oh yeah, this is one of the... Empathy is something very interesting because we know the human being is in sight and still we laugh. Isn't that very interesting? So we thought, hey, we did this with a test audience and we thought, why do they always laugh? Don't they know it's a horrible position this friend is in? So we thought, he <laughs> wants to commit suicide, but he cannot because he's a doll. Um, and dolls or uh, comic figures or little Mickey Mouses, whatever happens with them, they cannot die. So as uh, working poor people cannot leave their situation, this one cannot do that either. So no matter what he does, no matter how many times he hits his head against the wall, he has to get up because he cannot die. So the act of being there is also the tragedy itself. So I even put it, it was at one point so funny the whole time that I put it microphones inside of his uh, suit to have a slice of empathy uh, because otherwise it was just funny. And that wasn't even hard enough so um, at one point, um, so he gives audience what they really need. So it goes on. Baddest music ever. And the question is, of course, what afterwards? The problem is you cannot stop. So, and now we decided to do the same thing again. With all the jokes and all the learned dances and everything was just a huge setup. But of course there's no hope is easy. And so we thought we do it a third time. And then after a while we get this kind of mechanical Lynchian nightmare environment. The, the thing about, this is where I also, uh, about the horror, um, something strange comes up. The catastrophe is beautiful. Um, the, 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 the idea that we loved 9-11 as an aesthetic thing, um, the, the, this wow, look at it, something happens. Um, and I think it's, it's one of the strangest. Um, uh, I, the more I can be as hard as I can in my, with my stuff, I get so many times, oh, Chris, it was so beautiful. Like, what the hell? Um, so this is a, a, a thing I still have to uh, figure out. How are we on time? One minute. Then I will end with uh, this one. Always good. 
Sound is ready? Oh, sorry for the advertisements. So it's a beautiful inside firework. That's it, thank you.